Hey, what's going on? So there are certain actions that you do all the time, which could probably be automated using code. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in macOS using the Automator app. So let's get into it. So here in macOS, if you right click a file, you'll see there's a quick actions menu. And depending on the type of file it is, you'll have different actions you can perform on that file. What we're going to do is create a custom quick action that will let us resize all selected images to a specific size. And we're gonna use a piece of open source software called FFmpeg to resize the images. So if you don't have that installed, I'll include a link with instructions down in the video description. So let's get started by opening up Automator. So Automator comes with macOS by default, so you shouldn't have to install it. And when you first open it, you'll get this pop-up here where you can choose what type of project you want to create. So we want to create a quick action. So let's select that. Okay, so up at the top where it says workflow receives current, let's choose image files. So when we run this quick action, it's going to expect to receive image files, whether that's one image file that you've selected or a whole list of them. And here in this next dropdown, we want to choose Finder because that's the app that you'll be viewing images in to process. And for the image, you can select any icon you want. This will just show up in the quick action menu. For example, when we go to quick actions, these icons right here. So you can select whichever icon you want, or you can just leave it as this default one, or you can actually design your own and then import that here by clicking choose. But I'll just leave it as this dot, dot, dot. All right, now over here in the search menu, type shell, because we're going to run a custom shell script on the images. So just double click this. And then over here where it says pass input, choose as arguments. So here we have a new shell script and it's looping through all the files you selected. So if you just selected one file, there would just be one file in the loop. But if we selected all of these and did a quick action on them, it would loop through each file. And this is where you would perform the action you want to be done on that file. So right now it's just echoing out the file name. So we're gonna remove the echo and we're gonna set up a few variables that we can use in our script. The first one's going to be the file name without the extension. So the full file path, but no extension at the end. So these are .jpg. So it'll be the whole path to the image and the image's name, but no extension. So we'll type file name to create a new variable equals F. And then we can use this colon R to get the whole path and file name without the extension. And the next variable we'll create is for the extension itself. So we'll type extension equals F colon E to get the extension. And finally, we need to create a variable for the image once it's been resized. So we'll type output file name equals. Now we have to string a few things together. So we'll do double quotes. The first one will be the file name itself which is the full path and file name without the extension. And then maybe we'll do a dash dash and then type resized. And then we need to get the extension in here. So we'll type dot and then we'll do the extension variable. So the dollar sign and then curly brackets are how we print out a variable within this string. All right, so now we can actually write the part where FFmpeg resizes the image. So we'll create a new line here and let's find out where FFmpeg actually lives so we can just put the full path to that executable. So we can type which FFmpeg and we can see because I installed it with homebrew that it lives in opt homebrew bin FFmpeg. So I'm gonna copy that and go back into automator and paste it in. So the first thing to specify is the input file. So we'll type dash I for input and then we can use the F variable here which is the variable defined as we go through the loop of all the files that we've selected. So that'll be the input file. And then we're gonna do dash VF for a video filter. This is just an image, but FFmpeg is used for a lot of video processing. So we're gonna apply a video filter and the filter is going to be scale because we're going to scale the image. So we can do scale equals, and then we can just type the width of the image. So we'll say 1000 and then a colon, and now we can specify the height of the image. So we'll just say 500 as an example. And we don't have to include this next option, but I'm going to because it's the quality setting. By default, the quality of the image is pretty low. 
So we're gonna type dash Q colon V for the quality setting. And we're just gonna say one. So that's the highest possible quality setting. I think this goes all the way up to 31, which is the lowest quality. But we'll do one for the highest quality. And now we just have to specify the output file name. So where is this file going to be saved to and what is it going to be named? But we already created a variable for that right here. So we can copy that and just do a dollar sign to get the variable and paste that in. Now let's save our new automator script and we'll call it resize image and save. And that's all we have to do. We just created a custom quick action. So let's test it out. We'll go back to finder and let's open this top image here. We can see this is quite a large image. So let's resize this using our quick action. I'll right click it. And if we go to quick actions, you can see resize image is right here at the bottom. So if we click that, it'll do its thing. And then we get an image here. And if we look at the file name, it is the file name dash dash resized and then the extension, just like what we had here. We have the file name, then we have two dashes resized and then a dot and then the extension. So that worked, let's open it up. Perfect, and you can see it is 1000 pixels wide by 500 tall. But it's actually a bit squished because that's not the aspect ratio of the original image. So if we wanna maintain the aspect ratio of the original image, I'll show you how to do that. Instead of specifying a height, we can do dash one or minus one. And that will mean it'll resize it to a width of 1000 and then we'll choose the right height depending on the original image aspect ratio. So all we have to do is save this and it's updated. So let's delete this and run it again on our file. Resize image. And let's open this up. Cool, so it is no longer squished. It is the proper aspect ratio. Let's test it on another image here. So we have this wallpaper here, again, quite large. Let's go ahead and resize it with our quick action. Nice. And you can see the file size is significantly smaller because the image is much smaller. And I do this all the time. I need an image to be a smaller file size or a smaller resolution because certain websites don't like you to upload the full resolution images. Uh, like if you're going to do a new banner on Twitter, it can't be 10 megabytes. It needs to be smaller than that. So I have to open the image up in Photoshop resize it, resave it. And I just wanted to create a quick way to do that. So I'm using quick actions. All right, so that's all for this tutorial. But as you can see, there's all kinds of interesting things you could potentially do with Automator, especially if you're using it to run shell scripts because shell scripts can do just about anything. For example, you could write a script that automatically uploaded all of the files you selected to a server via FTP. I'll probably actually write that for myself because that sounds pretty handy. Or you could write a script that would process video files and convert them to a different file format. So the possibilities are endless, but this is just a quick demonstration of one thing you can do with it. All right, so that's all for this video. If you liked it, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. And if you wanna see more videos on shell scripting, Python, Flask, React, HTML and CSS, then subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.